Hey everybody, this week we recycle some pretty beat up pallet wood into this multicolored clock. Well, you know it's cold when the ice starts to roll into shore. And so when that's happening, it's time to stay warm down in the wood shop. But first we're gonna make a stop to the garage where for the last year and a half, I've been drying some of this industrial pallet wood. Now these are the thicker pieces. They're like four quarter by six. And they're gonna make a great starting point for this clock. And so I was looking for contrasting colors and I didn't want to make a square scrap wood clock. Way too many people have done that. I'd like to build this into 12 sections. And if you do the math and you divide by 12, you get cuts at 30 degrees. So I did find three distinct varieties, pine for sure. The one in the middle is poplar. And the third variety has got some reddish tone to it. And I don't believe it's cedar. It doesn't carry that cedar aroma at all. Uh, but in any case, it's the third color variety. So with those three distinct colors, it's gonna make a nice mix for this particular clock. The other problem I had, you saw the pictures of the wood on the rack. It was all pretty twisted and cupped. And so I cut some workable pieces down first, but I needed to get the hand plane out and take down the high spots so that I could actually get this thing to run through my electric thickness planer. And so it's just a matter of flipping it over, taking the high spots down, and then I got at least one good flat side to work with. And I had to do that for all three boards. Now they were definitely not the same thickness. They were not exactly at an inch or four quarter. So the thickness planer gets it to the point where they were all just under an inch, about seven eighths of an inch in thickness when I was done. And the only thing you're striving for here is consistency between the three varieties. Some nice little color variations too. And so with the boards starting off at a straight 90 degree cut, I turned my chop saw to 30 degrees and I took the first set of cuts there. But the saw blade, of course, didn't get all the way through, so I had to pull out the hand saw just to finish the clean cut here. Now, rather than have to turn my chop saw back to 90 degrees to continue the cuts, I moved over to my mini sled, which is always set at 90 degrees, and then I took the second set of cuts here. And here's my second set. Now, ultimately, we created four sets of these three colors, one for each hour of the clock. Awesome! Awesome! Very nice. I like the colors. <laughs> I do really like the colors. The pattern actually came out better than I expected. Accidental, but really pretty. Now, this was difficult. There's no way to really put a clamp on this thing. Uh, if I had big rubber bands, that probably would have worked, but I had to hold them together with my hands for a few minutes until the glue could set up, and then I could actually put a clamp on it. When the glue was wet, they just slid around. And after I built those individual sections and I built them into halves, uh, there was that gap between the two pieces that I had to grind down on the belt sander. And so now that they're relatively flush, we'll get the two halves glued up and because they have relatively flat surfaces on the top and bottom here, I was able to use clamps to pull those pieces together. I really tossed around whether or not I wanted to cut off these edges because it looked a little bit like a sunburst. And I kind of like that. But in the end, I chose to make it round. And I had to build a little jig for my bandsaw, which is basically just a small piece of plywood clamped down to the saw. 
and a screw drilled in the exact center of the clock, which uses as a pivot so that you can turn it around on the bandsaw. And with a little cleanup here on the belt sander, the edges weren't that bad, it just needed a little sanding. It was ready to go. And the surface was pretty close because we had planed the boards down, but they're never exactly clean and smooth, so uh, just holding it down on the belt sander a little bit, ground it all down nice and smooth. Now these are really inexpensive little clock mechanisms. You can get them at the craft store for easily less than $10. But I needed to make some room in the back so the mechanism could fit in and to give myself enough depth or to take some depth away so that the shaft of the mechanism would poke through the face of the clock. And I think depending on how you do this project, um, you may or may not have to do this step. Let's say you were just using three quarter inch lumber from the store, uh, that shaft I believe would be long enough to poke all the way through. And we know this will fit now from the back. Well, I have to tell you, I really didn't want to use the cheap little metal hands that came with the clock. And I wasn't sure whether or not I could make hands out of wood, but I like this really dark African wenge. It's almost black in its coloration. And it's a, I had to cut it very thin. You can't make the hands heavy at all or they won't turn. So I cut the wenge as thin as I could and then took some measurements and cut out little wedges out of the wenge. The hardest part was drawing it up and making sure that the point was in the center of the wood. And you can't really use power tools when it's this thin and this small. So I had to use the handsaw, try to get it started on the line, and then finish the cut. And you really have to be careful and go slow but eventually I got a couple of decent wedges out of my, my thin little strip of wenge. In fact, I cut three different sizes to see which one looked best on the clock face. The other thing I'm gonna do is because this wood is so thin, I'm gonna stiffen it all up with some CA glue, which is just super glue if you've never heard of CA glue before and it impregnates the grain of the wood and it basically turns it into a thick plastic layer, a thin plastic layer, and toughens up the wood. And I kicked around how much trimming I wanted to do to the face of the clock, but I just put a 45 degree beveled edge on it with the router. Now for the numbers, of course you can buy plastic numbers or you could buy stickers or you could try to route them into the wood but I had this really cool little wood burning set that I got from my kids a couple Christmases ago and it comes with a metal template for letters and numbers and I figured why not it took a little time you've got to go slow and you're kind of poking the wood burner in through this tiny template but it did a pretty nice job putting numbers into the wood here. This is my favorite part. You know the colors are going to be distinct. You know the alternating pattern is going to show through, but you don't really have any idea how pretty it's going to be until you get the finish on there. And this was just spray lacquer. But the colors really do pop between these three varieties of wood. Really my favorite part of the woodworking. And that CA glue made it 
even more difficult to drill holes through this wood and you have to be careful if you push too hard you could split the wood but the CA glue like I said helped to toughen it up and I was able to drill holes now I off camera I tested the drill bit size to make sure that you know it could still go on the stems of this clock mechanism and be firm and and be able to turn with the mechanism it can't be too sloppy or it just won't work And those dark Wange hands look really nice on this clock. Now I can't really make a second hand. The mechanism came with a second hand because it's got a stem that fits down into the actual shaft. But this is how the whole thing came out. It really came out great. I was pleased. And you know, you gotta clean up after you're done. I hope you guys decide to give this a try. Hey everybody, thanks for joining us. We hope you liked the video. We also hope you subscribe to the channel and if you click on the bell on our main page, you'll get notified every time we post a new video. Thanks for watching.